Hello and welcome to today's video where we are going to continue talking about OB82, which is the Diagnostics Organization Block Interrupt for Diagnostics. So if something is wrong with any diagnostic capable um, device, in our case, we are going to look at this input, right? at my input module here that I've got here. So the real physical input module here. <clears throat> We are analyzing errors. For example, I will pull the plug. Here's power. I will just pull it. Let's see what's going to happen. All right. Uh, this I already explained in the last video a little bit, where I talked about the hardware and so uh, and the physical side of it. This time we will talk about the OB itself. <clears throat> Therefore, let's put ourselves in the following scenario. Right now, I do not have any uh, diagnostics turned on for any of the channels. I can go here to my input device, as already seen in the last video, I can go to my inputs and I can actually uh, turn here the the diagnostics on, right? Either it has no supply voltage, hey, send an error to the PLC, analyze this, or hey, there's a wire break into, into this input, hey, uh, something's broken, do this. One additional info from that I didn't do re really do last time, we can also have this overview here it's a diagnostics overview of all channels. So I don't have to uh, go here and scroll through everything. Right? I can also just go to the diagnostics. And here we see uh, for each channel, I can individually turn it on or off. If I want to do it individually, I can turn it on to manual. And now I can say, hey, for channel zero, which is this one here, right? Channel zero is this is channel zero. This is channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, blah, 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 channel 16, 17, 18, 19, and so on, because I have so many inputs. I can either do it manually for each and every one. So for channel five, I want the wire break diagnostics on. Um, then I would need to do it manually, right? For each individual one, or we can take it from a template, which means that all channels that are derived from this template that have this template setting um, are changed at the same time. So I don't have to do this here uh, 32 times, but, but uh, this is quite annoying. Now we can take a template and you see in my template, supply voltage and wire break diagnostics are deactivated. I can go here to channel template and I can turn, for example, the supply voltage uh, cut on. And let's see, this is now also on for all my channels. So the diagnostics for all channels are now on because I changed the template. All right, same here. Now all channels detect the supply voltage loss and also wire break, which I don't want to do. I want to have this individually. So I will turn it off for all of them. You see it's off again. And I want to turn the wire, uh, the supply voltage loss on for channel zero, which is my input zero, zero up here. And I also want to turn it on for um, channel number 16, which is, oh, I want to turn it on for both channel zero and channel 16, which are in both cases, the utmost inputs here, right? If they do not have power supply down here, I can cut the power. If I cut the wire, both won't have because all of these are deactivated. If I just pull out the jumper, only channel 16 and all the right side won't have power anymore. <clears throat> yeah. So now I turn it on for those two. Uh, I can download. I will load and I will finish. And let's go online to see. Right. Now everything is green. Everything is fine. Now I take my screwdriver here and I will do something. I'll do this. Whoops. Uh, we'll do this. Here we go. I did something, right? And you see it turns red, turns red. So there is a diagnostics problem right now. I can see this here, right? I can see it here at the PLC, at the physical PLC. You see red flashing, red flashing, and this one is on all the time, which is channel 16, because I disconnected the jumper here. So channel 16 does not have power, channel zero still has power. If I pull the plug, channel zero also will have the error here. <clears throat> yeah. So, but this was all explained already in the last video, right? The thing that we are talking about here is how do we deal with this in OB82? Because right now in my program, 
how should my program react? Because how do I know if channel 0 has the problem or channel 16? I somehow need to distinguish. I somehow need to see which one has the problem, right? Because it could be that we have t a thousand input modules and one of them has a problem. How do we deal with this? Because somehow we need to analyze which one is the problem. And therefore, I will go offline and we will add a new block and we will add here my diagnostics error interrupt OB82. Okay, now I've got this in my program and what we have for this organization block and also for some others, but here in special because it's very important is this here. Do you see this on top in my block parameters, right? In my block parameters, I have IO state, I have LADDR, I have channel and I have multi error. Those things are my diagnostic data. Whenever there's a diagnostic problem with any module, it sends information. And this information I can read with those four variables. Let's look at this. The first one here is <laughs> the IO state. IO state meaning what is the error? I have a list here. Right? I have a list. If, if this variable is zero, it means everything is good. The module works fine. If it is bit one, it means the module is deactivated. If it is a bit two, it means maintenance required and so on and so on. Bit four is an error, right? This is the most important thing. So we can read out of, of IO state. I can read the, what's, what is the error? What is going on with the module? Why did you actually execute OB82, right? That's the first. Then I have LADDR, which is a hardware identifier. So with IO state, I know what is the error. With LADDR, I know what, uh, where is the error. It's a hardware identifier. This hardware identifier, if I go here to my hardware configuration, this hardware identifier, every single hardware that I add, my PLC here, my IO module, and every other component has a hardware identifier. It's just a number. To find out this number, you can double click on any device and there's system constants. System constant and then, then I see hardware identifier. My hardware identifier for uh, my IO module here is identifier 257. So if my diagnostics here says, hey, 257, it means this IO module has a problem. If it says 33, it means there is a problem with the configuration of the PLC. If it means, if it says uh, 64, it means there's a problem on the Profinet interface one and so on and so on. We can find this using the number that uh, the OB delivers. Let's see the next here. I like this, <laughs> this, this also, the channel, this one here, the channel. This is the channel number. So in our case, if we are talking about this, it would give us channel zero or channel 16, channel one, two, three, uh, three, four, five. Where exactly is the problem, All right? This is what we get. And the last one, if we have more than one problem, we have a multi-error. This is just a bit, zero or one, uh, if there's more than one error. If I, for example, turn on the diagnostics for uh, the whole, for more than one right now. Oh, as I have it, I have it for channel zero and channel 16. If the power for both gets lost, we have a multi error. It will tell us there's more than one error. Uh, we can interpret that as well. Therefore, I usually build the following. I will make a data block right now. I will call this error in here, just so it's a little bit organized. I will make first a variable uh, of type uh, that I call, let's say current error. And this is actually type struct, which means it's a structure of sub variables, right? A structure of sub variables, not too important. You could also do it without this and just add those four. This is what you could also do, but actually a structure variable is very helpful here. So I will go here and I will add, just add those four into my table here. I also date led channel mult 
T error. They don't need to be named the same way. You could do anything. It doesn't really matter. But the data type is important. Right? So this is important that they have the same data type. This is not too important. You could name them whatever. It doesn't matter. And to put them in a structure, for me, it's just simple because now I can actually minimize it. Right? It's, just, it's just a more structured way of programming this. Good. So those four I have. And now whenever... So in OB82, whenever it is executed, I want to push those four variables into my uh, little database here. So I want to have a move for the first three because it's one word, it's a hardware any and the uh, unsigned integer. Those three I need to move. One, two, three, right? I want to move them from my OB82, which has the information. I want to push this information into my data block, where I, as a user, I could now display it on my HMI. I could use it in my program to actually catch the errors to say, hey, if module 256, uh, 57, that's our IO module, has an error, please turn off all motors. Still have the hydraulics on because that's what I need, but turn off all motors. Stuff like this. Now we could react because we know which module has the problem. And the last one is a multi-error. I will also push, of course, in here. So if I download this now, here we go. <coughs> so we have this, right? And whenever I do something with my hardware here, we can actually analyze, right? We can analyze. So I will take my screwdriver and here's the thing. While I do it, you make a guess where the problem is, right? So I will open my hardware configuration here as well, right? That's somehow in the background here. Um, actually, we don't need the data block because it's displayed here anyway. So uh, right here, I will now do something and you have to say to yourself, of course, you can't tell me, you can write it in the comments where the error is. So. Let's see, I do something with my screwdriver. Maybe I'm unscrewing something, maybe I'm doing something, who knows? You see this? So, the first thing is my current I.O. state. It is 0010, which I want actually in binary. So, 0010 is in binary 001000. So, bit number. Zero, one, two, three, four is active. So bit number four was error, right? So in my IO state, I can actually see we are in error scenario. Good, I mean bad, but good that we know it. The next is, what is my hardware identifier? It's 257. So if I go back here, hardware identifier, is let's see uh of the system constants hardware identifier 257 no hardware identifier 257 yes so it has to be in this module and the next information that we have is current error channel is 16 huh, 16 make a guess is it my channel zero no it channel 16 has the error right we can see that here in the program and now i could react and multi-error, no, we do not have a multi-error. This is the only error we have. Done. This I could now really use in my program to catch the errors or display it on an HMI. This is where the repair person goes or send to the internet or whatever. Let's see what I did now. Very strange, right? Very strange. I, I did something. 0001. 0001 is... 000, whoops, nope, that's wrong. <laughs> uh, 0001 is just one, is in binary 001. What does that mean? Uh, bit zero is active, it's the last bit. Bit zero means it's good. Make a guess what I did. It's good, and it says at my hardware identifier 257, so the same module, and this does not really matter right now. Um, it says good, the module is good again. So we can also see that the error is gone, that everything is fine again, right? That everything is fine again. So now I will do one more thing, right? I, or, or the other way around, I will already say 
bye and thank you and if you have any question just leave it in the comments below i will do one more thing and i will leave it to you to write a comment on what i did right on what i did depending on the data you will see now right don't forget we have channel 0 and channel 16 are diagnostic they are turned on if the if the cable is not there if the power is not there anymore i will now do something and you write a comment on what i did let's see let's see if you can find out this will take a second right this will take a second la, 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 la. what do i do i don't know Boop. hmm zero zero one zero what was that two five seven what was this 16 hmm, okay that sounds strange hmm, and multi error is also on what could i have done right what could i have done i will leave you with this thank you for watching if you've got a question just put it in the comments below uh leave a like subscribe and i will see you the next time around bye bye